Hello folks, welcome back to my channel. Earlier on in the year, I bought this sleeping bag here, the OEX Evolution Fathom EV300, and I've had the chance to use it a few times in between the summer and uh, now, and I thought I'd show you some of its features and give you my thoughts on it, what it's good for, what it isn't. So uh, yeah, I hope you'll join me in this video. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime let's crack on with this video. So I bought the sleeping bag because I was going on a um, nearly wild camp with my wife and daughter and we didn't have a, a third sleeping bag suitable for kind of late summer early autumn temperatures so uh, yeah i bought the oex bag i've already got a five season oex sleeping bag the leviathan 900 and i was quite impressed with that so i figured i'd give this fathom 300 sleeping bag a bit of a go um, it's a three season bag so it would have been fine for the initial needs that i wanted it for in August um, I hadn't really had the chance to test it out in uh, colder temperatures but at the beginning of December I took it on what turned out to be uh, quite a windy and relatively wet wild camp temperatures dropped to around six degrees at night so that was a much better test of, of how I thought the bag would perform as I say, the bag's a three season bag. It's got a comfort value of one degree C. Uh, from my experience, I tend to lift the comfort temperature up by at least two degrees and often three. So I felt for me, it would probably be good for around four or five degrees. The bag's fairly lightweight. It's um, 1,050 grams, which is actually quite a lot lighter than the bag that I had been using in the summer. And it's fairly compact, packs down like this. Uh, that's just as it is without you compressing it. But it can be compressed down quite a lot, which is uh, good for me because it gives me more space in my rucksack for all the non-essential luxuries that I tend to take out with me. Pebbles decided to help measure the compressed sack. For some reason he likes sort of tape measurey things. But anyway, it's about 30 centimetres long when you compress it down and around 16 centimetres in diameter. Although I suspect you could get further if you wanted. So let's take the bag out of the stuff sack and have a little look at it. The bag's a full mummy bag, as you'd expect with a hood. The um, padding on the hood's actually reasonably substantial, to be fair. The padding in the rest of the bag actually felt a little bit thin um, so I was a little bit worried when I was on my uh, camp in December when it was going to be five or six degrees as to whether this bag would be warm enough. Um, I brought along a bivy bag as a backup that I could put over the top of it just in case I needed to get an extra couple of degrees out. As it turned out though um, the bag was fine, had uh, no problems at all and I didn't need the bivy bag. The hood area of the bag up here has a single uh, drawstring adjuster, an elasticated one, just to cinch the hood in. There are no additional baffles to prevent drafts from getting down uh, into the bag, as you can see there. Um, so in that respect, it's very much a, a three season bag. My um, five season Levi OEX Leviathan bag has all sorts of baffles and, and drawstrings up here to prevent drafts from getting down inside the bag. At the top of the bag there's a, a little velcro fastening. The purpose of this is to stop the zip gradually undoing overnight and there are no real special features on the inside of the bag. There is a baffle on the zip that you can see here to prevent drafts getting in through the zip. This piece of black tape here 
is there to prevent the zip from catching on the baffle as you do it up so it's possible to do it up and down without any snatching and one of the things I do like is this little finger pull here makes it very easy to do the zip up and down looking at the lower half of the bag the foot box is quite large and it seems to be quite well filled with insulation down here there are a couple of little tabs here and here which are used if you want to hang your bag up to air it out after you've used it and the zips basically are a two-way zip so there's another zip toggle at the bottom which you can open up in the night so you can stick your feet out if you want to I guess the important thing really is not so much looking at the specs and features of the bag but what it actually feels like to sleep in it the feel of the material of the bag itself is really quite nice it's quite silky uh, this is something I was uh, familiar with having used the OEX Leviathan 900 sleeping bag in the winter it's something I quite like um, other people may not like that sort of silky feel the fill is synthetic which is what you'd expect for a bag at this price point it's uh, typically on sale around the sort of 45 50 pound mark OEX is the in-house brand of go outdoors and so you find it on sale in go outdoors blacks and millet stores for me the bag's fairly roomy inside um, I kind of like to move my arms around a bit inside the bag I don't like being kind of swaddled like that uh, I'm five foot just under five foot nine and I weigh just under 65 kilos so for me I found the bag uh, quite nice and roomy not too constrictive at all the downside of having a bag that's got a bit more room in it is it takes more to heat it up and keep it warm so that may be something to sort of bear in mind and equally if you're a significantly bigger build than me like you're six foot one or something then um, it's worth checking the the length of the bag out to make sure that you've got enough room but for somebody like me around the five foot nine mark it is uh, plenty roomy enough the most important thing of course is how it performs temperature wise and what sort of night's sleep you get out of it I've used the bag now at temperatures between sort of 12 degree nighttime temperatures down to around five or six degree nighttime temperatures at 12 degrees the bag was very comfy you didn't need to wear any base layers or anything like that at that kind of temperature I think when you get to 15 degrees it'd probably be a bit warm and you'd end up sort of sticking your feet out but that's fine and I must admit I was a bit worried in my December camp particularly when I felt the sort of thickness of the insulation it didn't seem to be that thick and I thought oh was I going to get a bit cold knowing the temperature was going to be maybe six degrees or so and I was very surprised I actually had a really good night's sleep in the bag I dress typically in uh, a merino wool base layer leggings and and top and I had a thin pair of socks on um, and I was perfectly fine there was not a hint of cold whatsoever uh, this kind of tallies up with my experience of the temperature ratings on bags I've done an earlier video on understanding the temperature ratings and how to relate to them yourself if you like and for me I know I take the comfort value add on two or three degrees onto that and that should give me the value at which I'll be comfortable so for this bag it's got a nominal comfort rating of one degree and for me I feel sort of four or five degrees is probably a realistic comfort value and I think that's probably what I discovered in my December camp uh, where it was maybe six degrees and there was no hint of me getting cold so in terms of its usage I, I suspect for many people one degree might be pushing it a bit its description as a three season bag is probably more or less fair enough I intend to be using it probably from 
probably April time, maybe mid-April, around through to typically early October-ish, um, unless the night's particularly mild or, or particularly cold. But yeah, it's a, a decent three season bag. It doesn't weigh very much, packs down quite small. So I shall be using it quite a lot next year. I'll probably even use it in the summer and stick my feet out. So overall for the money, 45 odd pound, I think it's a really good bag. And uh, on that note, I shall bid you cheerio and I look forward to seeing you next time.